So that night at the rose ceremony, I checked in with you and you seemed fine. Then a few days later, you were visibly upset. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about that? The night that you guys got into that fight, Christian says that he partly regrets his decision and he feels so awful. Would you ever forgive him? Jade, I'm sorry. Please, let's talk about this. I'm sorry, okay? What did I do? Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I'm a syndapsis. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about syndapsis or skindapsis, whichever you prefer to say it. I think the correct way of actually saying it is skindapsis according to Peggy's plants. I know she did research on this, but Summer Rain Oak says syndapsis and I feel comfortable saying syndapsis, so I'm gonna stick to it. But what I wanna share with you guys in this video is how I care grow and propagate my syndapsis and also share with you guys the different varieties I currently have in my collection and introduce you guys to a new syndapsis I just got. It is actually the first plant I purchased in 2021. So I'm excited to obviously get to that. But first, let's talk a little bit about syndapsis. So they are actually part of the Aroid family and they are native to Southeast Asia, Queensland and Pacific Islands. And there are many varieties that's currently within the syndapsis family. So the most common one you'll often find within your big box store or your plant shop is the syndapsis pictus. And even within that variety, there's different types. So you got here, for example, the exotica. So when it comes to the exotica, the one thing you guys will obviously see is much more of a larger leaf than say the argarius or even the silvery ann. And even these three can often be mistaken to be the same. I know a few of them have been called like silver satin pothos, which is another issue that I have because I know when I first started or even till last week I used to think this was part of the pothos family or an epiprenum because of that name uh, similar to like my jade satin sometimes it's called jade satin pothos but it is a syndapsis so uh, very hard to tell sometimes the difference between you know a syndapsis a pothos or even a heart shaped leaf philodendron especially if you're not familiar to uh, the way plants are structured or the genus of them I think the one way to tell them according to Wikipedia is it's based on the different seeds or like the ovule that they produce, syndapsis produces like one while like I think an epiprenum or even a philodendron produces many. So uh, that's how you can tell. But most of our indoor plants do not, um, you know, bloom. So I can I will never know the difference or see that difference. But for now, I'm pretty confident that this is a syndapsis pictus exotica. This is a syndapsis argarius. And this one's a silvery ann. And some of you may even argue with me that this is not a silvery ann because they look very similar with this one between the Argarius looks very similar but let's break down kind of the difference between these three pick this so first of all the exotica you guys can see here when you compare the three of them is it has a larger leaf size than the Argarius or even the silvery ann in addition the silver variegation or pattern on the exotica is a lot more prominent and obvious than you know the other two with the midrib being like this nice green color it is a very beautiful um, syndapsis to be honest like whenever I look at it I'm like wow I'm so happy I got this in my collection and I actually got this cutting from uh, Natasha and then when you look at the Argarius it's a little bit smaller leaf than the exotica a lot more smaller and then on top of that the silver pattern is actually more like a splash like that's all over the leaf However, when you compare this Argarius and you put it side by side to the Silvery Ann, they can actually look very, very similar or very close because the Silvery Ann also has that splattered, you know, silver splash on the leaf as well. However, there is a bit more prominent silver lining around the edges of the leaf, especially at the bottom of the leaf on the Silvery Ann when you guys look closely here. So very, very similar in terms of the way they look. However, they're not, and even if these were all silvery ants, to be quite honest, no plant ever looks the same. So they're very, very cool, very beautiful plant. And they are actually fairly easy to care for. I care for all three of them quite similar. And even the other varieties I have, like the Jade Satin Pothos, the Trubii. Uh, so first of all, when it comes to the lighting, I do give these guys a lot of my bright, indirect, south-facing light. I actually have all of them, except for the Trubii, on 
on my shelf upstairs in my bedroom and it's about like four feet away from that south facing window so they get a ton of light now they can thrive in like medium light as well as northeast or northwest facing the amount of lighting you give obviously makes a factor in terms of how fast or how big your plant gets when it comes to watering these plants i do allow the soil to dry between waterings and there's a few ways to obviously tell that Take your finger, stick it in the soil. If it's sticking, it's still wet and moist. If it's not sticking to your finger, it means it's dry. Another way to also tell when it comes to syndapsis is they will tell you when they need to be watered, when their leaves start to curl inwards. And you guys can see here that the Exotica has a couple of leaves that's curling inwards as well as that silvery end. So these guys do need a bit of a drink, especially when their leaves are curling. I like to give them a nice, good, good drink. So allowing that water to drain through before placing it in my decorative pot and then placing it back in their location. The current potting mix I have all my synapses in are pretty much in just regular potting mix, a bit of cacti soil and a lot of perlite or pumice. So I would say soil is about 50%, whether that's a regular potting mix or cacti soil. And then the other 50% is perlite or pumice just to add that extra drainage because they can be prone to a bit of root rot, especially if you are a heavy waterer. So that extra perlite or pumice will really help when it comes to obviously making sure that that water drains through. Now I do find synapses tends to grow a little bit slower Actually, some of them a lot slower than the pothos for sure, especially my jade satin and my trubii when I first got them, they grew quite slow. But I'm thinking this exotica is also gonna grow a little bit slower. So I don't often need to repot these guys like every year the way I would say a pothos or even a alocasia or even like a ficus for example. However, these guys right now, they're all in a four inch container. This silvery ant does need to be repotted this spring because another way to tell is when those roots are starting to show at the bottom of your pot through those drainage holes. And in addition, these guys are starting to dry out a lot faster than they were before. So that tells me these guys need to be repotted. So I do plan on repotting both the silvery ant and their garius probably in the spring. I don't think I'm gonna repot the exotica because I did just get this cutting and I don't see any roots showing here. And this does take a little bit longer to dry than these two. The Argarius, for some reason, I do think grows a little bit faster than the Silvery Ant because these tend to grow a lot longer in terms of their vines and they trail really, really fast. I do find that once the Syndapsis starts trailing, it does kind of take off. So this one is not necessarily trailing yet, the Silvery Ant. And again, the Pictus Exotica is fairly new to me still, but, but once this Argarius started to trail, it just pretty much took off. And that's the same thing that happened to my Jade Satin Pothos. See, I even know they call the pothos. I mean, my jade satin synapsis. Here, I'm gonna show you guys. Ta-da! So first of all, I get a lot of comments about this plant whenever it's featured in the background when I film upstairs. This is my oldest synapsis that I own. I think I've had this for over two years now. It might be three years come this summer. And when I first got this, it was in a six inch pot. And you guys can see here, I'm gonna pull a footage of when I first got it. And there was a lot of vines. It's a beautiful plant. And when I first got this, it was really slow grower. It wasn't trailing at all. And then I actually ended up repotting it maybe a year and a half after, because like I said, it wasn't necessarily growing as fast. However, the roots were really growing strong and there was a lot of plant in that one six inch pot. So what I ended up doing is actually splitting these two. Ta-da! So here is the other half of this plant. So again, back when I first got it, both of these were in one pot, six inch container. And once they started to trail, they just took off. This one was actually really long. However, I did recently cut this to propagate. I love the way this jade satin synapsis look with its giant heart shaped leaves. And I think it can actually get a little bit bigger than the exotica in terms of the size of the leaf, but this nice dark green color at the top of the leaf and then underneath it has that nice silver satin finish. Really, really cool looking plant. And uh, I know a lot of people were very disappointed that this did not get a rose in my 2020 uh, top 10 house plants. It was fairly close. I did struggle with it and I do feel bad, but who knows, maybe this is the year for synapsis. So that is my jade satin synapsis. The next one in my collection I wanna show you guys is my Trubii. Ta-da! So you guys have seen this a few times in my videos. It is a beautiful, beautiful plant. Unlike the jade satin or the pictus or even the silvery ant here, the shape of the leaf on this one is a little bit more longer, not necessarily heart-shaped leaf. However, I do got a couple of new ones here. That's a little bit more of that traditional heart-shaped leaf. I also like that silver kind of bluish gradient color that's on top of this green leaf and it's so beautiful. And as I mentioned, Syndapsis typically are slow growers, but this one for sure is a super slow grower, especially even comparing to like the silvery ant, which is also a slow grower. And even the 
Jade Satin, you know, it took a while for this to really take off. Again, this is two years of growth, over two years, but once this thing starts to trail and I can already see it start right here, it is gonna take off. So I'm excited to see this as a trailing plant on top of my bookshelf because it is a beautiful Trubii. Now there are another variety of this. There's a dark form and uh, I don't have that one in my collection, but definitely something I might add in the future but this is my true bi now another reason why syndapsis i find really easy to care for is they don't necessarily need a lot of high humidity i don't have these guys in my greenhouse nor do i give them extra humidity to be honest they're pretty much just living their best life on top of my bookshelf and then this true bi is here in the living room just hanging out and they're doing just fine with regular room humidity which is about 30 percent here in my house right now so these are the current syndapsis that's in my collection right now and then the new one i got today or yesterday is the Ta-da! A Syndapsis Lucent. So this is a new variety of Syndapsis that I've just come across. And this is such a beautiful Syndapsis. First of all, if a Monstera Silta Pecana, a Cebu Blue, and a Jade Satin Syndapsis had a threesome, this would be the baby. I'm serious because it has that nice kind of bluish tone, uh, ethereal look that a Cebu Blue has. And then the veining patterns of like say a Monstera Silta Picana that you guys can see here. But then it has that nice heart shaped leaf of a Jade Satin Syndapsis and it just looks so cool, so unique. And I'm excited for this particular plant. Now, based on what I've read so far and just kind of looking for information out there, there's barely any. This does require a lot more high humidity, especially the fact that I just imported this plant. So I do need to keep it in my little humidity bin that you see here. And I do have it planted in sphagnum moss just to kind of help acclimate this plant. So I do want to put this back in here so that way he's not, uh, you know, going in shock right now, but it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. He's so excited for this. And uh, I know there's a few different types of lucents out there. So you now have the true bi, the moonlight, the dark form. You got your pictus here, but the lucents, there's also different varieties. And uh, I don't know what this one is. I think this one's called maybe a silver lucent and there's like a green one. And there's like a silver hero and there's like a platinum. So man, I love syndapsis. Uh, again, reasons why I love them, they're easy. Hopefully this lucent's gonna be easy after it acclimates. Uh, and they're all beautiful and they trail or you can get them to climb up. And I think I'm actually going to try and get one of the Jade Satin uh, syndapsis to actually climb up, uh, similar to what I did with my uh, pothos back there, uh, because it does look cool climbing up as well as trailing down. But so these are the syndapsis that's currently in my collection right now. And there are a few more I wanna get in the future, maybe a couple more lucents, but we're gonna see how this one goes first. Comment below and let me know which of these syndapsis are your favorite or if any of them are in your collection right now. Another reason why I love syndapsis in addition to them being easy to care for and really beautiful is they are also easy to propagate. The only thing when it comes to propagating them is they do take a little bit longer to root. For the most part, the way I propagate my syndapsis is similar to my pothos where I just take a cutting, find that node, find that aerial root, have a single leaf there and stick it in water that you guys see right here. However, they do take a long time to root. Look at this neon pothos that I stuck maybe two weeks after I did the syndapsis. The neon pothos has a crazy root system already and then the syndapsis still has no roots. So a few of them are starting to show a bit of roots, but that is usually my first preferred method when it comes to propagating syndapsis, even though they do take a long time to root and start growing. I did try a sample of sticking a wet stick, which is just pretty much a piece of vine, no leaf on it, with a node, with an aerial root, in a prop box and so far I did manage to produce this one and you can see here there's already a new leaf the root system did grow however this also took a while for it to start showing uh, some signs of growth so just keep that in mind when you are propagating your synapses if you're not seeing any growth or any roots you know don't freak out you're not doing anything wrong for the most part as long as that leaf and that cutting looks healthy it should be fine so there you guys have it that's pretty much how I grow care and propagate my synapses hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video learn a thing or two and we'll see you guys in the next one peace